Ron Bennington, Earl Douglas from The Bennington Show. It's the return of Earl Douglas, <laughs> Ron, legendary uh, producer. I can't tell you. Like, Travis and I have talked about it multiple times. Because obviously, Travis and I are the only ones left in the office that have been around since 57th Street. Yeah. And when we started seeing... Earl Douglas, <laughs> Febreze himself, yeah, in that office, like on a daily basis, it just makes us smile it every is, day. Uh, you know, uh, Jimmy, I guess you go back. I go back with with Earl since NEW, of course. Yeah, like what, eighteen years ago? Um, yeah, two thousand, yeah. yeah, about two thousand. Yeah, that's crazy, huh? Yeah, how few people are still doing, you know, this kind of radio? Yeah. since those days. How did you end up getting Earl Douglas back in the fold? Did you have to convince him? Did you have to convince Sirius? And what had you the... tried before and he said no? Because the last <sighs> time we saw, and the reason I called him Febreze, the last time we saw him, he was so stressed out, he invented an allergy to Febreze that would make him pass out. <laughs> no, <laughs> that, that, was, that, was, that was legit, right, Earl? That was stone cold real. Yeah. <laughs> that wasn't made up. There was no, way it... too much Febreze in that studio, Earl. <laughs> I'm the first to admit it. <laughs> but Ron, Ron or Fez or whoever would spray Febreze in a room, and it would make Earl lose consciousness. Yeah. And it really wasn't too long after that that Earl uh, left well, radio. Take a break. Well, he uh, yeah, he took a sweet break for himself and left. Kind of crazy, right, Earl? I mean, you had a an exit thing here that was insane. Yeah. It was it's just... legendary in HR. <laughs> what happened? Uh, what was your exit? I don't, God, I can't even remember. It's, he gave a speech <laughs> of where he thought he and the company should be heading. And uh, what? Yeah. I did. Yeah, I honestly don't remember this. And um, well, was I this got on the air on. No, 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 no. It was off the air. <laughs> and um, when he left, you know, they were. You know how they get concerned around here about sure. who leaves and what they're going to do. Of course. And the word postal. Was, <laughs> um, was his ID removed immediately? Yeah, I mean, that, yeah, that's the whole thing here is like, uh, don't come back and visit. It's a big part. Right. But Earl didn't lose those things. You, you, you were able to stop back every once in a while. Yeah, I was. I, I did your show a couple of times afterwards, and it, it was cool. Do we I thought it was cool. Do yeah. we remember what Earl's idea was for a better satellite radio? It was going to be. Uh, it was going to be in depth rock and um in depth rock yeah rock he was going to take the rock hard he wanted me and him to to go in a direction that, that he still talks about with me to this day rock it, heavy yeah but of course it wasn't the show that they bought you know what i mean right, it was yeah. just right. a totally different thing <laughs> and uh so he took some time uh still but you know earl goes back before all of us in New York radio. Yes. Wait, you were with Scott, so, right? Yeah. Um, I started in WNEW in 1989. Wow. Was that when you were doing the public file, or was this uh, before that, or after that? Yeah, I became, what was it, public service director in 90, I want to say 94. Oh, okay. And he was also our union rep. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was never the union, I, I became the de facto union rep. Yes, after that's the got, union rep. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You can't say I was never the union rep, but then I became the de facto union rep. <laughs> no, I have no, to correct you I, on that one. I was yeah. never voted on to become the official show. you still were. Also safety. Uh, safety manager. Were yeah. you the safety manager? Yeah. It's yeah, an important I job. Like, I was like a deputy fire or something. How and... does a guy handle all those responsibilities <laughs> to be you know, in charge of public service and the union and everybody's safety? Yeah, well, that's a lot. Remember, I think that was all after nine eleven too. So, oh my, when it really counts yeah. yeah, for well, public safety, they just point well, to no, the windows. Yeah. No, the fire first safety responder, thing. first responder. <laughs> Earl no, they they got really crazy about like building, uh, careful building, building <laughs> evacuation <laughs> after nine eleven, and they we had all Anthony fires tells and, this uh, great story about the fire alarms going off and everything at. Uh, at the old NEW, and he looks out the window and saw just sees Earl's face, the safety manager, looking straight up in the street. <laughs> the guy who was supposed to get everybody out. No, I ran into the office. I was like, okay, we got to go now. And he was just <laughs> just kiss standing yeah. people out of the way. <laughs> so you didn't stay in the building to make sure everyone was out safely. Yeah, and I was like, let's go. Because I mean, you got to, the drill was. Yeah, get, you got to run the drill. Yeah. yeah. Get, Follow me, go, guys. You go from office to office and say, hey, we got to go now. Let's go. And he was just like, 
Like, yeah, it's no big deal. Right, <laughs> right. Just very right. So you just about. stood down at the, at the while you left him up there to burn. <laughs> Is that right? <laughs> that was his choice, not mine. <laughs> <laughs> you know how many firemen will say that? <laughs> hey, he was the one in the burning building. Yeah, <laughs> the baby didn't want to jump out the window, so <laughs> what? I was going to put him in a fireman's carry and drag why not, him Earl? That's that why they call great. it that. <laughs> <laughs> what did you do all these years you were away from radio? You left. What year did you leave Sirius? Uh, 2009? Yeah. What, did, what have you been doing for the last nine years? Um, most of it was at the, I've been at the Hard Rock. And what was your job there? Uh, I, I play records. You play records? <laughs> I, play, I, play, I, I always say I play records, but... What do you mean? What's the job uh, title? Um, vibe manager. I see. <laughs> what? <laughs> you, basically, they give me, a, yeah. they give me this it's database. Like vibe manager? <laughs> yeah. They give me a database. Oh, I, a video. I thought his radio titles were bullshit, and then he said vibe manager. Vibe manager? That's a job? <laughs> That's a job. What did you, well, you're in charge of the vibe? Yeah, I mean, basically, you set the tone of the building. So, if let's say... Uh, All this is guitar is on the wall. What do you have to no, do to say, set the tone? Uh, let's say Ozzy's in town, and we have a room full of Ozzy people. I play hard rock, metal. You know, keep. What if you're uh, supposed to just playing like? Uh, what else might you play? Like they're, they're like, no, we don't want to hear any bad company, or we don't want to hear any soft rock, no stealing Dan. Yeah, you, but you try to feel that out. You try to for the vibe. Well, I think I think Jim's question is like, what would stop them from just having an intern put on the best of Black Sabbath? You're a Pandora channel, right? <laughs> A, well, I know it. I, yeah. Well, my he musical expertise it. and now, what know. would you do if a black family walked in? How would things changed? <laughs> Tell me something, go. <laughs> 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 you know, some R and B, some funk. Some yeah, <laughs> that's cool. But that seems like it's stereotyping, doesn't it? It does. But they'd probably be offended, and then they'd look up at the vibe manager and realize he's Earl. <laughs> it's and it's like, oh, okay, yeah, okay, I guess that's fine then. The vibe has changed, everyone. <laughs> that's, that's what people do, though. When they yeah. feel the vibe changing, they immediately start looking. Where's the vibe manager in here? Who's doing uh, this? What if you saw Sam walking in? What would the vibe... He suddenly would change the vibe of the room. What would you play? Um, Sam's a millennial, I would assume. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, probably like Foo Fighters. Okay. Pearl <laughs> That's Jam. Good. Okay. That's good. Um, yeah, yeah, I understand the yeah. job now. All right. Yeah. So okay. are you still there? Yeah. Oh, you are still there. Yeah, I'm working tonight. Oh, okay, <laughs> sweet. That's I, enough to pay your rent. That like meaning like that's a full time job. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that, well, no, I mean the but vibe just, is it's not all open in the morning. It's it's open yeah. just in the afternoon and night. But right? it's just a really like when somebody tells you this is my job and you go that's they pay you full time for well, that. I, that's I, like I, an insulting. I mean the hours that it, it seemed like the hours you work wouldn't be enough to to cover what you need. Well, yeah, I mean um, I'm there from basically five until close. Um, oh, okay. close at one o'clock on during the week and two a.m. on the. Oh, okay. And you have an hours. iPad, right? That's the, yeah. We have the, an uh, iPad. It's a, f a video database. Uh -huh. uh, we also have some audio in there. Where's your office, or where's your, where do you vibe from? <laughs> <laughs> I don't have an office. I'm basically on the floor. You're on Jim, the floor. How do you figure out the vibe of a room from the office? Earl's got to be right. on the floor. No, but I mean, you, are, you a, are you in a DJ booth? No. Where You're do just, you play from? No, we have an iPad. So oh. you just walk around the room with your iPad? Yeah, I mean, but I'm I'm helping everybody out. I mean, the restaurant business is really crazy. I mean, you could do you're doing everything. You could be uh, scouting tables. You could be bussing tables. You could be moving tables. It's a lot you with could, tables. So you're <laughs> crowd control. You can do so, anything. Well, don't tell us that you're a bus boy with a fucking iPad. That no, would I mean, be you, I mean, destructive. By the way, I do think there there would also. If the Hard Rock hired a vibe manager and made him also act as a busboy, that feels racial, is that, doesn't it? it? Yeah, it just, racial. Well, it just feels it's demeaning to his position. Right. Like, I don't know if they would do that to a white vibe manager, is what I'm saying. I don't know. I mean, you know, uh, that's, it feels prejudiced. No, it feels like that the, the, that that the job of vibe manager is being disrespected. The job right. itself is that right. they're saying, "Hey, we don't think this is a very important job, so you can do this while you're doing that." And why aren't you like a hype manager instead? You should be like the hype guy. Like um, have a microphone and an iPad? Yeah. I see. I don't know. I never thought of that. I'm, I'm, okay. I don't consider myself a hype guy. Right. You don't? Not at all. You're more a vibe guy. Yeah, like, you could tell, like, music stuff. You uh, the stuff vibe of this room right now, what would you put on for us? What would you... You're like you're looking around like oh the guys are all together again. That's tough because you yeah. got Hard Rock Jim, you got Millennial Sam. Like, right. yeah. wh where's the? True. Yeah. You know, you have Ronnie. You like you know like Elvis Costello, right? And right. Grant Morrison and you can't peace, just... love, and understanding. <laughs> <laughs> that would be great. But I mean, Troy's in here too, and yeah, Troy's Troy. all tatted up. Like, That's what true. what do you yeah. do? You walk into this room, you see it's it like skate punk. What do you do at this point? <laughs> yeah, like uh, yellow card. 
What do you? What do you? <laughs> what do you? What do you? What do you? What do you plan for all of us? What do you get the iPad on? What do you? What do you tap? Uh, let's see. Uh, for Ron, I would start with the no, no, no it's, it's for, the for, room. The room. for the room. No, we're I'm all just, eating uh, together. <laughs> Four of us are eating together. That's right. Yeah. And then, of course, Anthony's in there, and you know, you got to have da 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 That's right. You know, he fucking loves that stuff. He does. Something uh, with an organ and a monkey right. to get him going. <laughs> I'd probably start with Soundgarden. Oh, oh fuck. Yeah, we I all didn't even like think that. of that. Yeah. yeah. That's a place we all meet. Yeah. You, you know, know Soundgarden, maybe but System of a Down. Stay with the hits for me. You know what I mean? Like, I don't want to get too deep. <laughs> right. System of a Down. Mm-mm. Uh... Then move into, you know, Jay Giles. <laughs> Jay Giles. <that's> a, <laughs> that's yeah, that's Jay Giles shocker. is popular. Yeah, yeah. yeah. you like that. <laughs> Give me your centerfold. <laughs> <laughs> I like that one. So how do you make the transition? I mean, not that you made the transition because you're still a vibe manager, but how do you <clears throat> come to this realization? I've mastered the art of vibe managing. I want to get back into this radio thing. Well, I mean, I got to thank Mr. Ronnie B right here. Oh, he no, really you don't have to. He really uh, made it happen. How did it happen? Phone call, an email, um, chance it a, meeting? It was a text, actually. Yeah, Ron text. sent me a text. I think it was uh, Memorial, right before Memorial Day weekend. Yeah. And then how long did it take us to get you in? Um, two months. Yeah. Why? Now, is that you guys convincing Sirius that he's not going to do another one of these speeches? I, yeah. The thing is, I was on the road one day, and I get a call from Merle, and he goes, well, thanks anyway, buddy. I just the fact... And they had called him and told him that we're going in another direction. <laughs> and I go, Earl, there isn't another direction. You were the only person yeah, that I was, we wanted I, to I do this. I got this email basically yeah. saying it. And I was like, okay, that was that. And mm-hmm. that was how you got fired? No, no that was this time when they were trying, trying to hire to him. back in. Oh. He didn't pass through. So, and I, so with no other options, right. they were like, we're going to go with nothing right now. Right. I see. And then I called Wiki, and I go, come on, dude, what the fuck? And he goes, he didn't have anything to do. It was HR. Because once they put these tags on you, right. you know what I mean? That's the problem. That's why we can't get East, East Side Dave back in the fucking building yes. just to say hi. Because he made a couple of fucking murderous threats. <laughs> yeah. Just against, a couple. Yeah. And that doesn't leave. And he's like, to me, he's like, the well, the guy left. And I go, yeah, but that fucking thing. You know, it's just stuck to you somehow. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, mean, you, I mean, everyone makes a, a murderous threat occasionally. Yeah. <laughs> right. Good man's fault. Earl didn't make murderous threats, though. No, he though. didn't. No. But they were still, they were like, you left the company, we, we don't, don't want know, you back Yeah, in. we don't know exactly in that file, but it's something. Did you ask they Earl, like, show that, you your file? No. Does that concern you? Do you go to HR and go like, hey, guys, now that I'm here and we're all one happy family, just... What was the hiccup? No, I mean it doesn't bother me at all. I'm ready. I'm like moving forward. That's how do you great. get smooth? How do I get smooth? Vibe. Yeah, that's a positive attitude. How do you yeah. get smooth? Great vibe. <laughs> <laughs> how do you get smoothed out? How do they get smoothed out? Um, it turned out that it was an it was an older because I I think I tried a couple of years ago and it was an older one and they had rejected that one and they never got around. But they called them two years after. No. <laughs> Who knows what that fucking was? No. no, you know you can't really interact with HR. It's crazy. Like, right? Even the biggest bosses that we have, they can't go to HR. It's a totally separate thing. We mean yeah. they can't go to them. They, it's like you couldn't. Like the president of the company can't go and say, "Hey, can we take care of this thing?" That's away from them. This is like between them and the lawyers. That's how come HR was set up. And all the years that I worked in radio, we never had a fucking HR right department. Thank God. And now it's a huge floor. Right. It, it, where is it? Somewhere in like 37, and I think some of it's up the street. We yeah. don't really know those people. Yeah, because you know what it is? You don't the, want la- to. the lawsuits from the companies. Right. They, they fuck the company. They want HR to nip this shit in the bud. Exactly. It's exactly right. It was set up so that people, particularly the creative people, can't do their ideas. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> when, when, when I started radio, the people that we used to take on. Uh-huh. Uh, like the youngest producer would be just the guy fucking hanging around the balloon every time that there was something that went out, this fucking idiot or some caller who would call too much and we'd go like, dude, do you want to, do you just want to fucking be in radio? Come yeah. in here tomorrow. We're going to take your pants down. We're going to put stuff up your ass. <laughs> see how it goes sure. from there. Yeah. I mean, I, I remember even when we were on 57th street, the uh, intern hiring process has changed dramatically. Sure has. Yes. Just in 10 years or whatever. Yeah. 
You know, and it used in- to be like, this will be a fun guy for the air. Right. And now, well, interns are not for the air. Interns, yeah. we got to make sure we're teaching them. And, and also, but we can't have them have they these responsibilities. Right. They have to have... People are always saying to me, how's radio change? I go, well, we don't see the interns' tits anymore. You know what right. I mean? That's the big <laughs> fucking major change. <laughs> Guys and girls. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they used to be able to do anything. And now you can't right. do any of that stuff. <laughs> So, have you met HR? Sorry, Sam. Have you met them or no? I'm not. I don't know one of them. I really don't either. I don't know one of them. Uh, You know, they send interns in that they think would fit the show or whatever, but we're not even part of that process anymore. They are. So, like Scott and Andrew and those guys, they really can't tell HR to do anything. They can't tell them to do a damn thing. I think their strategy, historically for us in terms of finding interns, their strategy has been the ones that Sway says no to. Right. (laughs) Those are the ones who end up doing our show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So they deal with the attorneys. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. (laughs) And I mean, yeah, you don't want to... Meeting with lawyers in HR. Do you know how not fun that is? That's the worst fucking thing There's never a fun experience. I got to meet with lawyers in the HR. Oh, great. Yeah, yeah, I mean it's it's ninety nine percent of the time bad news when you and the, have the a meeting lawyers with HR. aren't familiar with you or your show, no or anything that's happened. You know what I mean? Well, they're it's not putting cool. a value on that. They're just looking at a piece of paper and saying, "How does this play?" Yeah, how does this play? That's all they care about. How can yeah. we cut that's ourselves? How can we cut out this cancer before it gets into the bones? Right. That's well, how they look yeah. at us. Yeah. Before it metastasizes. <laughs> that's yes. right. So you brought Earl back, and then. You shocked the world. I was telling you right before we started that uh, Jim and I couldn't be at the Thanksgiving show this year because we were in L.A. We were zipped across the coast. Yeah. Which we were bummed about and especially bummed about when I start looking at the pictures the day the Thanksgiving show is getting uh, recorded. Yeah. And none other than Pistol Fez Watley. Yes. Walks out on stage for the first time since he left. Yeah. And, I mean, I listened back to it, obviously, and the reaction that he got was... Unreal. It was crazy. How'd you guys right. sneak him in? Uh, that was very fucking difficult uh, because we didn't even want uh, we didn't even want Hard Rock Johnny or Wiki or anybody to know because you know how they are. They're like little fucking loose lips. Oh, all yeah. of them, you know, oh, off yeah. they go. So we couldn't even plan this bit, but we did a real old school radio bit where you know it was uh, this is your life. And Big A, the insult comic, came out. Oh, yeah, out. Keith was there? All right. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Keith Robinson was there. And the place went fucking crazy for him, too. And then Stalker Patty, and I'm like, what? This isn't even my fucking life. This is <laughs> ONA's life. This is Opie's <laughs> life. Why is this up here? And then, the, uh, then she was like, uh, all right, we've got a phone call that we're going to put up. We're going to FaceTime. And I was like, I, you know, there's one thing I learned in this last years and I'm not a victim anymore and I'm not going to, st- I'm going to stand up to my abuser and I'm not going to take any call from a man who fucking physically and spiritually and sexually abused <laughs> yeah. me, Fez Watley. So while I was doing that, he came walking out. It was just fucking old WWWF shit. It was you know? great. And, uh, Wait, the- was he on the monitor or no? No, no, no. no. He came walking out from behind. Because even a phone call, because people knew yeah. that even like a Skype call or a phone call, that would have been like a big deal. Is there right. a video of him walking out? I want to see that. I've not seen that. I don't think no. that there's video. No, no video? Here's, no. Now, uh, the fucking uh, hilarious thing about it is we've been talking about this for years. Mm-hmm. And we were saying like, we'll do something live, but if we do, if you're like a regular caller... Or whatever, who gives a you know what I mean? It won't it won't have the same pop. Mm-hmm. So like in a, in a real fucking old school, uh, you know, magician thing, we fucking waited as long as we could. But then in this time, he had another heart attack, and now his heart attacks are called silent heart attacks because of his sugar diabetes has fucking numbed up his uh, nerves. Mm. He doesn't feel the heart attack anymore. Wow. So he just fainted, woke up at the hospital, and then two days later, they're like, well, we went over. You had a you know pretty bad heart attack. Oh and this is a- after having all the fucking the cords ripped out. And the... No, forget the stents. He's, he did a quadruple bypass. Oh, oh wow, my the, God. Yeah. So that's this what... was after. This was, this was, he had a heart attack after the bypass. Yes. Oh, my God. Yes. What is it? Is it uh, genetic with him, or what's going on with this fucking heart? Yeah, that's part of it. And the other part, and this is true, and I didn't, I don't even think I said this on my show, but so Gail and I go over to run through this bit with him, right? And he's very excited because, you know, he hasn't done this stuff. 
there was fucking six Coke cans in his <laughs> fucking room, right? He drank six fucking Cokes that day, <laughs> and he's got sugar diabetes. Uh, so this is like going over your fucking friend's house after he got out of rehab and seeing a crack pipe there. <laughs> you know, it's the same shit. So what do you do? You, at that point, you're going. Fezzy. Didn't uh, say a word. Because what are you going to do at that point? Yeah, we had a job to do. Yeah, that's, that's not the time or place. <laughs> yeah, right. Because you yeah. want to believe at first, when he first started having heart attacks, you want to, oh, he must be just stressed out. He's on the air. Maybe he's, he, the show is stressing him yeah. out. And then he goes home and he just keeps having heart attacks. Yeah, worse than true. ever. Yeah. Now, does and he, have he any still has his stress worse than ever, too. I mean, it's He's still stressed out? Yeah. Does he have any desire to come back up and do some more radio? Um, You know... The thing was, this wasn't the easiest thing in the world for him either. You know sure. what I mean? Like, this was fairly exhausting. He killed it. Uh, he hung around and signed shit for people. I mean, he was just fucking great. But there might be, you know, some kind of specialty programming or, I don't know. I always talk to him if he wants to do a podcast or something. But right now, he's just, you know, dealing with his health. But he's still fucking, he, he's still a great writer and he's just hilarious. I think he just got a bad hand. Yeah, know? maybe. Mm -hmm. you know? I saw him in Florida when I was down there in, in Tampa. He came with some yeah, friends. Yeah, I was really excited about that, too. Yeah, I was happy to see him. Yeah, I was I happy to see him. I saw him at WrestleMania when they were in Florida. I yeah. didn't even know he was going to be there. I just saw we were at the Hall of Fame. And I'm just like, who's that in the front row? I was like, is that, <laughs> is that Fez? Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, it was, uh, I, I just loved it. The the reaction that he got, everybody went right along with the bit that was going yeah. on, and it was it was the bit great. That he came out and he was my abuser, and then he slapped me, and then Gail slapped me, and then Fez slapped me, and then the uh, you would fucking like this. So then the whole thing is like Chris Stanley supposed to come running out. I stop a punch, smack <laughs> him on the head, and then all of us put the boots to him, and then we celebrate, and then we bring Chris up and we celebrate while we're fucking doing Hogan's music. It's just fucking retarded. Yeah. But Stanley, as he throws the punch and I block it, he fucking dives on the ground. No. Yes. Why? <laughs> He's a fucking idiot. <laughs> and seriously, I haven't, I haven't even slightly let it go. I'm fucking tossing. I'm like, this bit was going so fucking great. Yeah. Did he ruin it? In my mind, the audience has no idea. But this, thing, also, fucking Earl. You missed the fucking thing too that you agreed to do. Earl, what'd you miss? What were you supposed to do, Earl? Because I noticed Earl wasn't. Um, I was. I was. <laughs> Here's what happened. Line. I so when I'm freaked out that Fez is there, Gail's trying to get us together, and I yelled, I, I and I'm, I'm going to yell, I've been triggered, and then Earl was going to come running out and go, hey. And I'm like, triggered, Earl, triggered. <laughs> but I look up and he's not fucking there. He's not in his place. Where the hell were you? Vibe was... managing. <laughs> were you vibe managing? Was it weird to do a bit in your home place like that? No, I mean, I, I, I had the mic. I was you were nowhere near I, I where was... you need to be. Where did where was, was, was backstage? Why didn't you come out? Yeah, you know how far backstage is <laughs> from where you belong? You gotta be it's side stage, bro. It's fucking 30 feet. Yeah, you had to be on the side you of the stage. You had to be at the top of the fucking stairs. Why it's a line. You? It's quick. You know? Why did you come out and do it? He's thinking about music. <laughs> <laughs> is that what happens? Sometimes you get at the Hard Rock, and even though the Bennington show is happening, and that's your new responsibility. This is your home now. Yeah. You start thinking about the vibe, and all of a sudden, poor Ron is out of producer because your mind is on the vibe. Because he's thinking about It's American Band by Graham Funk Railroad. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> or did you, just, did, you, did you just not like the joke and you didn't want to participate in that joke? Uh, it was a great joke. to say it anytime you want. No, it was a great I mean, joke. If I cross the line, I'm only now getting woke. You know what I, mean? <laughs> I don't know everything that's happening in this world. But you are getting there. Kind of. I mean, Good. I'm hitting the snooze alarm, but I'm trying my best. <laughs> I'm really, really drowsy, though. Is that the issue that Ron's not woke enough for you? Is that why you just Ron let is, left him Ron out to dry? Right. Ron is very woke. You have every right to attack the white man after what you put up with. Earl. <laughs> why didn't you want to do the bit? I wanted to do the bit. I was back. Mm. I had the mic. I had to run and grab a mic. I was backstage. I was waiting for the line. How far is backstage? It would have taken you fucking 18 fucking seconds to get there. <laughs> I was right at the wings. What goes on in your head? Oh, my God. He's driving me nuts. So when you were at the wings. And then why didn't you come out? Day. What happened? You didn't come out. Okay, you would have you had to been triggered. at the top of the fucking okay. stairs. Nobody would have been looking at you because they're focusing on Fez. You said the line, right? No, no, no. I fucking looked over that oh, he, wasn't he wasn't there. there. You know what I mean? And I had to fucking punch out. Oh, thank and, God. And then I got fucking, 
uh, Stanley laying Taking on the ground a from a blocked fucking. <laughs> so wait, you thing. blocked his punch and he fell? And he fell. <laughs> that does it? That's so stupid. It was fucking so terrible. <laughs> and I almost wanted to just say, "You motherfucker!" Yeah. Did you mention you it to doing? him after? Constantly, Jimmy. <laughs> Constantly. Off the air too? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We had. Uh, 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 he didn't fucking answer some texts when I was coming in yesterday, and I brought it up again. I don't know. Why didn't he answer your texts? Hey, he said, uh, you know, he's busy doing all this stuff, but... Like falling down on the stage at the yeah, wrong time? Yeah, I mean, time? when he doesn't have an answer, he goes fucking silent. Run silent, run deep. So yeah. That's his thing. He, he that, it, you know what? I bet he's the one that taught Shitterloaf. Shitterloaf does the same thing. Oh, is that fucking right? He goes silent constantly. So he gave you a, basically a, uh, a terrible soccer flop. That yeah. was what he did. He threw, you right. blocked it, and he fucking soccer flopped. Yeah. So when Earl's not on the side of the stage, Mm -hmm. are you thinking to yourself, he's been here for three weeks. This is fresh Earl. This is new, back on the scene, energy Earl. Yeah. And he's already letting me down. He just went to my my pre-woke Ron Barrington. You know what I mean? Oh, no, no, no. no. We know what that means. That's not good. Earl... That's on you, by the way. Yes, it is. If pre-woke Bennington comes back, that's on you. Did you know you blew it? Yeah. When did you? How did you know you blew it? it when I was clearly not on the stage. Make sense? Did you line. try to run? Well, you said no. you were on. Wait, stage. he said he I said was at the, I'm in backstage area. So no, he said, so. hold on. He said trigger. Did you run to the stage? No, he didn't say. He didn't I say didn't say trigger because oh, he wasn't said, in his fucking okay. spot. I, was, I missed my spot. I, I so say, did okay. you think to yourself, boy, did I just blow that, or did you think, oh, oh, I guess Ron just decided not to do it. I'm in the clear. I thought he was in this. Not gonna do it, but I should have been in my spot. But then, you, when did you realize that that wasn't the case? He was making up for the fact that you blew it. You know, no, there was just so many things going on that night. But oh. I should have been in my spot. Were you? What, you just you didn't want to be in your spot. No, I just he you didn't forgot. Want to, you forgot. Just, he did a moment. I just I blew my spot. Did you, you forget, or you didn't want to do it? <laughs> Did you forget? <laughs> you forgot. He was thinking about heat of the moment, wasn't he? Yeah. Heat of the moment. <laughs> this would be perfect right now. Yeah. Talking to a girl, Rosanna. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what was it? Was it forgetfulness or did you not want to do it? Yeah. Honestly. You know, I, I was, be completely honest, I was just so excited that there was this. And yeah, I, watching that, this show instead of being yeah. in it. Yeah. 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 Ron, blew my spot. That's did you realize great. you hired a fan, not a producer? He, I look. He blew his spot. Look. He did. It's a dog's name. Would you. <laughs> would, <laughs> would, yeah. <laughs> would you. Uh, Poor little guy. You know, we all know what we were getting by bringing Earl back. You know what right. I mean? That's you part get, of the fun. Yeah, you get some sweet, you get some sour. You got to enjoy it all. Yeah. You know? Earl, what was your when you, when you were sitting there vibe managing before you were back on Bennington, thinking about the Ron and Fez days? What was your what were some of the memories that you would think of that you were like, yeah, I missed that. What what were the what were the great times? Oh, uh, that you were involved in, obviously. I got um, just watching him do an interview. It's oh, always that's really nice. Bro. No, I'm like seriously. It him, watching him, it, it was like a clinic. I so could watch I, you walk down memory lane for hours. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when I said, "What was your favorite memory that you were involved in?" You went for <laughs> when Ron interviewed people. Watching him. <laughs> no, but, watching him. But, I, no, but <laughs> like you were doing. <laughs> that's, that's, right. that's what he likes to do. Watching him do an interview. Yeah. He likes to watch you, Ron. <laughs> a lot of people don't even know this, but Earl came back from a, a pretty bad sickness too. It was touch and go when he was gone. And it, it was what the was last... This? I didn't la- know that. Yeah, it was the last case of sickle cell anemia <laughs> that we've had in this country. Do you know I almost, I almost asked if it was sickle cell? <laughs> <laughs> Were you really sick girl or no? No. No. <laughs> you got me going. <laughs> well, <laughs> you know, uh, before he had the Febreze problem, this is before you, Sam. Yeah. He got a bad ulcer from working with O&A. So much that to this no. day, he said he almost died. No, nope. I had two two bleeding ulcers. I needed three <laughs> blood transfusions. Is that I was right? see you for a week. Where were your ulcers? They, they were like here and here. Uh, he's pointing to his asshole and dick. <laughs> it's not ulcers, Earl. <laughs> why did you? Why were? Why were you so stressed out? What was it that was stressing you out to that extent? No, I. When they tried to make him ski. No, it turned out I. It turns out it's actually um, genetic. Oh, but really? it just happened that one time. Has it happened to you since you got away from those guys? No, I, um, no, but, but um, I'm the I'm the eighth of I'm the oh, eighth of eighth kids. Is that why he used the to have eighth eighth saltines kids. and club soda yeah. everywhere he went? Yeah, <laughs> why? Because of your ulcer. That was part of it. I mean, but, but I'm the eighth of I'm the I'm the You're youngest Henry of eight. the eighth. I'm the youngest of eighth, <laughs> and. And um, why does it shock no one that there's eight kids in your family? <laughs> yeah, you know, smaller and, family than I thought. <laughs> <laughs> and um, 
kids two, four, and six <laughs> and eight all have that's stomach other names, oh. by the way. <laughs> two, four, and six. Get in here, George. Two, <laughs> George. Four. <laughs> Let's talk to the evens. <laughs> so, uh, but uh, the, the the stuff that you did, you did a lot. With Ron and Fez, I mean, you were you were very a very large part of that show. He was well. Let me tell you too with the blood transfusions. Okay, right. I came in and you had you were tied up to two different blood transfusions was going on, and I was like I was in the movie Blade. I'm like, this is so exciting <laughs> to see if this to see Wesley Snipes in the in his biggest role with all the blood going and yeah. everything. Yeah. <laughs> so what what was it? What was it that, that you were involved in that you were like, oh, man, that was a fun time. I missed that. That was sure. a great bit. That was, uh, you know. Big Ass Bash was a highlight. Oh, yeah. He the... boxed uh, Al Dukes. No, oh, fighting Al oh, Dukes. That, was what year was that? Uh, oh, that was back when okay. we were at NW. It was, yeah. right? Fighting yeah. Al Dukes was fun. Uh, Who won? I did. Did first, you not like Al? <laughs> first round knockout. Uh, but also, Al no, he had called me. He called me floor. out. Yeah. He totally called me out. But that was that was fun. That was the best shape I was in in my life because I we trained for three months. Oh, you really yeah. did train. Yeah, you have someone instruct you in boxing. Yeah, a real boxer. Yeah, it was a Jake uh, J, Ramada JKD instructor, and yeah, I mean, I got my ass kicked during <laughs> training, but it sure. was fun. Yeah, yeah. We can't really put on a night of fights anymore, can we? No, no, no. no. Those days are over. Yeah, I actually that night. This is how much radio's changed. Fucking Billy Staples did the Digstown uh, challenge where he fought 10 listeners. <laughs> <laughs> One after another, right? So we're like, all right, this will, you know how you do when you put together a show? You're like, okay, this should take, you know, 28 minutes. Of the, you know, yeah. this is great. We got this whole segment taken right. care of. And about the fourth or fifth guy fucking just comes out and hits him. <laughs> and there's Billy laying on the floor. The fucking place is going crazy. And I'm, I got six more fucking guys wearing gloves. And I just started yelling at the wall like there was something like, what? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this is insane. They're telling me that he went the full round. And then the fucking place is booing. And I'm like <laughs> fucking yelling at no one. What are you fucking? You were... All right, we've got to keep it going. The judges have said <laughs> they're fucking smelling salts, trying to get staples up and moving. Yeah, you're supposed to work these things, like yeah. in the Carney days. You're not supposed to actually have them fight listeners. Yeah, well, what are you gonna do? And you know, in the Carney days, those guys really were fucking fighting. Yeah, you know? that's where the shoots came from. They could actually win the fights. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, one person... Imagine trying to get someone to knock out a guy that works for you now. How how hard that would be to fucking pull. You just can't. You have can't. listeners. We used to have blind the blind boxing. Yeah. Uh, you just can't do any of that shit. No, mm -mm. all of it's gone. Mm -mm. All of it's all lawyers. Gone. And it's yeah. all from lawsuits. That that's but people are like. Why do you do the same shit? You can't. They won't let you do any of that shit. Yeah. Dude, I did. I had a fucking kid in Florida. And he was, just, his name was Billy the Phone Freak, and he was just this pale, skinny kid. And I'm on the air, and I said, you know, the fucking funny thing is, is as skinny and weak as this fucker is, he can beat any woman in a fight. The fucking phones are blowing up. Women want to fight him. So we take him out the first fight. And he's like, girl, he trained. He beats the girl. As we, I put him like through six or seven fights over the next two years. He's fucking, <laughs> he's nonstop training. He's getting better and better. So uh, I'm doing this big fucking gig in the morning. There's like 10,000 people in Tampa. And we got Randy uh, Savage is the fucking referee. <laughs> and this fucking Billy, the phone, he comes out, he looks like a fucking Navy boxer. He's just fucking nailing this chick. <laughs> hits her on the fucking head. She's out and not waking up. Right, she's not waking up, and I'm like, "Fuck, man, this is real." You got scared. I'm, yeah, I, I was scared because, like, and a fucking savage is next to me, going, "I don't know, dude. I don't think she's coming back." <laughs> <laughs> That's I've seen this happen before. I'm like, "Shut up, man, please." My whole fucking career, I've got kids in private. Well, school. you guys had you you had sanctioned the bout and gotten the proper insurance. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we didn't even have a fucking medic sitting by. <laughs> Just a fucking woman that our fucking producer knocked the fuck out. <laughs> isn't it crazy? Isn't it fucking <laughs> crazy? That this when you look back at some of the chances, like how that 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 was a lawsuit or that was the end of the career, and that Randy Savage would just be associated with it too. I don't know, brother. It doesn't <laughs> yeah. look good. He would not give me a fucking positive vibe. <laughs> when did she finally wake up? 
It was like a minute or so, oh. you know, like a fucking minute, two minutes. And it was the, like that entire time. You can't breathe. You cannot fucking breathe. You're like this. We fucking so, killed a woman. Brain damage. Yeah. 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 I had um, Don Vito. And this is before he did the BAM show. Is he dead now? Yeah. And he was a guy that I knew from my old neighborhood. So this was even before uh, Jackass. He used to come down and do shit on my show. And we had a, a fucking chicken wing and, and beer eating contest. And on the way home, we put him with the six finger boy to go back to his place. He fucking was laying back and he threw up in his own throat. And the kid didn't fucking tilt his head, just let him sit there with puke in it. And he fucking went brain dead. And I get, I, I come home from my show. You know what it's like doing mornings. You're fucking exhausted in the afternoon. I don't have to tell you guys. And I uh, getting calls from the hospital. He's, and I go there. And they said he's in a coma and he's fucking brain dead. And I'm like, motherfucker. And I'm like, now I got to call his fucking family. And there's one guy in his family. And I'm like, I hope that fucker doesn't take it personal. Because I remember he hit somebody in, a, in the head with a brick when I was younger. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, I got to fucking figure out a way. Right. You know? And I literally, I was talking to his parents about flying them down. And they're fucking crying. And then he just fucking sits up like the undertaker, starts fucking pulling hoses out of himself. And the doctors are like, we're going to run some more tests. And he's like, fuck you. I'm leaving here. This is fucking ridiculous. <laughs> and they said, you had no brain activity. And he goes, because I was sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> and now I'm in this weird fucking thing. But literally, like, I went from uh, this guy's dead. I don't know how I'm going to deal with this. To please, you get tip, get out of your shoes. I saw him put on his pukey shoes <laughs> and just go down the fucking hall trying to put on his clothes because he didn't want to miss out on his Florida vacation. <laughs> why? Why didn't your guy turn him over? He's a fucking idiot. I mean, the guy had six fingers. He's a fucking circus freak. He literally had two <laughs> fucking baby fingers coming out on the other side of his baby finger. <laughs> you can't count on him. Uh, no, that's no, a, no. Yeah, in well, hindsight, six you can. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> In hindsight, yeah. Uh, somebody on Twitter is uh, is remembering when Earl had to be wheeled out of the building after he faked <laughs> passing out after being sprayed by liquid ass, going so far to say that he had memory loss about the entire incident. You know why I remember that? I rode to the hospital with him because I rode with an audio recorder just to make sure that we got everything because that no. happened on O and A. I got flipped yeah. over. Right, that happened on O and A. And you guys were trying to get updates because Ron and Fez was on right after us at the time. And so we had to try to get Earl to the hospital and try to snap him out of it so we could get him back to 57th Street before Ron and Fez was over so we could get the update in. And why did you have memory loss? No, I got flipped on my head. I got knocked out. By who? Um, Fabrice? What's his name? Um, uh, Danny School Board. And I flipped over and I landed oh, on my Oh, that's head. right, Whoa. Danny. Oh, boy. He, he, Danny uh, <clears throat> was crouched behind him. Danny Ross? Yeah. I mean, I got, and I went, and I landed Who on the back Who pushed you? Uh, I don't remember. I, I, I don't remember. You have remember. memory loss, Oh, you got so. pushed. Okay. I got pushed and I landed on my head. I, the only thing I remember was in, when I was in the hospital, when they were like looking me over. I, yeah. No, I actually, I was in the ambulance and I was like, how did I get here? Did you pass out from the liquid ass? No, I got. You I, know, I'll I, tell you, I got he didn't, knocked out. I got, I, I got flipped over and over in and landed on the back of my head. He didn't break the whole time he was in the hospital. The whole time he was in the hospital, the ambulance. It was. Uh, I don't remember. I don't remember what happened. No, How did I, I get? I, he's I not a know. fucking squealer. He is not a squealer. <laughs> no, man. no. no. or a liar. People. I believe him. No, no, I, I totally still, believe I, I still, still don't remember what. I happened. totally believe her. All. But yeah. do you believe what he said about no showing on Ron on, on at the show? Yeah, he fucked up, hundred percent. But he didn't even give an answer. Yeah, I said I blew my spot. Blue spot. It was a lot happening. He was kind of enjoying the show. Oh wait, I forgot. Jim's got a lifelong defense of Earl. I'm because, Team Earl because Earl the took the Black Sabbath photo. Oh, that's right. That was Ronnie. I've... Ronnie gave me his pass too. But so. Fucking Earl never. So here's what happened to that. And this is really because it fucking went in to Jim's book that Earl was a hero. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, Earl has uh, passes to this, and it's Sabbath, and and he, you know, I'm going to go with him. And I go, you know, Jimmy's the guy who fucking loves Sabbath. Give him my ticket. And Earl went and took full credit 
and said, here's my ticket. Did I not credit you in the book? No. My terrible apologies. No, no, no. You didn't know at the time. That was our. You had no Earl. idea. Oh, okay. And then when I read the book, I went, motherfucker, I could have been in this book that I love. Right. And instead, you just got to read about Earl. Yeah. Story of your life, right? Earl did take a good picture, and Earl didn't walk backstage with me. We just walked back there like we belong there. Yeah, that's fucking great. That was the greatest night of your life. It point. will never be yeah. surpassed. I'll tell you, we talked about when we were talking, we were out in LA and we were talking about the wildfires. I asked Jim, what's the one thing you would take out of your house if it was burning down? And, and immediately, it was like my Sabbath photo. Because I'd signed by all of them. Right. Hold yeah. our trophy. I mean, what am I, a dick? I got to take And that it. was like the very beginning of you being able to have those kind of experiences, right? Well, no, it was 2006. Oh, so... was it that late? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I thought yeah, yeah. it was earlier. I came home early. I left the comedy festival a day early because it was anticipated snowstorm. So I left the Aspen Comedy Festival. So you can uh, make early. sure that you were back yeah. in time. Mm -hmm. Earl, you must have been proud in that moment, knowing that mission he, he accomplished. Was, he was so happy because I think you had lunch with Iomi. That Iomi day. that day, me, him, and Steve Carlisi and uh, Iomi's, they're talking about putting a, a possible Tony Iomi show on Sirius uh -huh. or on XM at the time. Right. And I knew that it wasn't going to happen probably. But we, we went for lunch and had a great time. And Steve was good because he talked to Tony's guy a lot. So me and Tony just ate Cobb salads and chatted away. You did? <laughs> yeah. You liked it? But Tony made that picture happen because Ozzy was walking away and he goes, Oz, come back. And he got Ozzy back for me. I also remember how you totally took over the press room <laughs> during the Q and A. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. That's fucking <laughs> because great. Because you were, you know, you're you're supposed to sit down. He stands up, and the and the TV cameras are in the back, so he's completely blocking the TV cameras. <laughs> and they're screaming at him. He could care less. Right. <laughs> I have I have footage of that. You can hear me in the background, but you could it, it's it's very faint because it's not uh, taped properly. But I was just shouting out fan questions, and Earl took black and white photos. I put one on Instagram recently. Photos by Earl but, Douglas. Um, but the thing was, everyone he asked the best questions. Of course, he's because, obsessed. But, because everyone's Those like, guys don't give a fuck. I remember one guy was like, uh, when you guys on tour, they were already on tour. You know, that happens all the time. But yeah. They did, like, those guys, I'm sitting in this room full of so called journalists, and they didn't know homework. And he came in and just, great questions. He's a super fan. He's like, this, this well, is Sabbath my press was conference. One of those, they were never the critics' favorites. Right. Right. You they know were what I mean? So. They always act like they're doing a fucking favor when they talk to those guys. Yeah, they really were shitty. Yeah. And uh, so, yeah, I just kind of uh, stood up and just asked questions. You didn't mind that you were taking the press's questions? I, I will never forget how annoyed they were. <laughs> Sit down. I was like, yeah, but do you think that you guys... <laughs> right, that's fucking great, though. <laughs> the camera guy's like, sit the fuck down. Because they were going to ask garbage. <laughs> yeah. They were going to ask garbage. And they were only going to ask Ozzy. You know, they weren't going to acknowledge the other guys, so fuck them. Did those... Uh... Sexy model shots that you took are those still on Google and everything? You remember when you had Earl do a sexy fashion shoot? Who? Um, I don't remember know. you were naked? You got your feet up in the air. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I mean, I can just I can see the photo. <laughs> they were good. It was a good photo. I had I had, I had so much fun. Wait, doing you that. were naked in a photo? Yeah, because remember I took shots of Lily. Then we flipped the scenario where they shot pictures of me. I am so, I'm now like Earl. I'm fucking blanked out by all <laughs> kinds of experiences. Look up, uh, Troy, look up Black Earl. <laughs> I mean, that's, naked. Yeah, Black Earl, <laughs> naked. Try that. I bet it'll come up. Okay, yeah, that's, uh, no, this guy's I think that's a different Earl. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> uh, Ron and Fez, right? Yeah. That would be fucking great. Yeah. Black Earl, Ron and Fez. That's yeah. a hung in shape Earl. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, there's yeah, Lily and Sam. Wow, these are old pictures. Yeah. Wow, really. Sam, you look like a baby. Oh, I remember yeah. that picture of Lily. Yeah, it's a good picture. Of Earl took that picture. Yeah, he did. But then we had a, a, the exact same pose. All right, pose. now I do remember that picture. I remember her picture. I yeah. Don't... The exact same pose, but it was Earl, but it looks like it's been scrapped from the internet. It shouldn't be. Yeah. Probably two I mean... people jerking off to it. <laughs> yeah, that's that's probably no, I did. fucking problem. <laughs> did you ever have people coming up to you when you were trying to manage the vibe at the Hard Rock, like, that were radio fans, stuff that you had done? Oh, all the time. And what would they say? No, they were like, you know, you know, loved you on the air, say hi to the guys, you mm -hmm. know. Why are you making out with a guy, though? Were you, was That's that East Side Dave. I know, I know. Yeah. But I'm saying, was that like a sexual relationship? You, no, like you can see how into it Earl is. Look at his face. <laughs> yeah, his <laughs> hand is all down, like, oh, for sure. by the yeah. back of the neck. And just, oh, it, I know the drill. But your shirt's like... <laughs> Your 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 whole chest is exposed in that photo. By the way, Jimmy, I didn't get a chance to talk to you about your set at fucking Gervais. That was so goddamn funny. Oh, thanks, Ryan. And so fucking edgy. Thank you, man. I can't believe how far that you're taking that unsuspecting audience. That's what was <laughs> killing me. Thank you, man. That was really, really funny. Yeah, man. you were great, too. It was a really good night, man. I appreciate it. He was fun to hang out with he, that night, right? He was great, yeah. Yeah, yeah. it was just I, well, it was just the three of us in the green room chatting and eating snacks. It was really, yeah. it was a nice night. Yeah, I saw Jim at Caroline's, like, uh, was that last weekend, right? 
Yeah. It was over Thanksgiving, and there is a bit that I told you that I liked that it's like it, you you sit there waiting to see if the audience is going to go on this ride. You know yeah. what I mean? And then when they do, yeah, it's like there you got them. You but know it's what I mean? never a hundred percent of them. <laughs> right, yeah. right. No, there's always some people like what? Yeah, yeah there's always a couple of <laughs> yeah. uncomfortable people. Okay, we have zero. That's really nice. Earl, why is your face so much darker than your body? Were you aware of that? Looks your like shoulders it, are light. Is that me? Oh it looks like they superimposed my no, head on no, no, that's, that's you, Earl. I, I recognize the feet. Yeah, I know those legs those, anyway. I, I would recognize those heels from across the room. <laughs> I'm going to tell you something, Earl. How sexy you are. I would have expected a little more definition in the leg. <laughs> you know, you're, you're, you're skinny. You're in good shape, but just not not a ton of uh, muscle. And the dark face probably it'd probably be a camera flash or a lighting issue. It, had to be. it looks um, like you, yeah. It looks like you have Sammy Sosa torso. <laughs> <laughs> no, you look good though. Sammy Sosa. I, yeah, we, we can't see your glutes unfortunately because you're known for those. <laughs> is that what you'd like to see? Uh, well, I mean, Earl is known. I mean, look, he's a great guy. He's got a phenomenal ass. The sad thing, <laughs> the sad thing that you can't tell from here is he was shitting while this was happening. <laughs> yeah, he was donkey tailing it. <laughs> <laughs> Do you like this shot? I mean, you look good. No, it does, it I like that you kept, the, you kept the bow tie awkward. on. Why? You got the fucking hand on the face. You're super sexy. You got the tie. You could have married a Kardashian. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's right. Oh, definitely. <laughs> yeah, because the husbands always turn out well. Yeah, they go they through, do. You could have fucked. Why not? Lamar Oda made it. <laughs> 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 what do you think of everything that's gone on with, uh, with Kanye West since he married Kim Kardashian? Yeah, I, I was a fan, and now I'm just like... He needs to. I, I, Is it the I, MAGA hat? He needs to go away. The MAGA hat's he, he too needs, much. It wasn't even that. I think. I think he's just sick in the head. I see. He re, he's legitimately sick in the head, and he you needs. He needs like help. medical attention. Yeah. Well, he's getting, he's on medication. I mean, he's not doing anything destructive. I mean, he's still putting out music and shoes. He makes an ass out of himself sometimes on Instagram, but who cares? Like he's not. He's not doing anything to turn him. Right. He's still working, and he's still. Yeah. He sat with the president. He literally held court with the president. <laughs> He's the only guy I ever saw shut Trump up. Dude, Trump it was, just sat there. Well, Trump liked that there was a famous black guy who likes him. Right. So he was like, oh my oh, God, yeah, this yeah, is yeah. great press. Especially a young guy. A young guy oh like that. God. A relevant guy. Yeah. Who loves him. Well, he took over that press conference. He, yes, did. he did. It was uncomfortable. He didn't it say was... a lot of important things. <laughs> no, no. Earl, was... did you think that he said important things? Not at all. I mean, he was just, I'm watching, I'm cringing. I'm he like... missed his spot. Yes. <laughs> 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 he was too far in the back. <laughs>